Right. <clears throat> Are we live? I think we're live. This is a very impromptu stream. I wasn't planning to do this tonight. <clears throat> so thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is the Lorenzo Il Magnifico digital adaptation. Oh, wait a minute. You can still see my thing in the background. We just need to fix that a minute. Uh, turn off the overhead camera. There we go. Right. Okay. Let's put that in the center. Yeah, so I've basically just installed this. Um, thank you very much to Cranio Creations for the Steam key. Um, and yeah, likes the music. There you go. So this has just been released, I believe. Um, yeah, it, it is now out. Uh, Cranio Creations have sent me a Steam key uh, and I'm going to be playing through it. Uh, let me know if the volume of the game is a little bit too loud. Uh, I've turned it down a little bit, just because it's a bit loud for me. So Lorenzo Il Magnifico, believe it or not, I've not actually played the board game. This is one of those board games which I am 99% sure I will like. It's just there's not enough time to play all of the games there is, but this is one that I really should have played. Um, anyway, so Ori is saying it was early access for a while. Yeah, okay, and we're, we're going to jump in. This is going to be a first look. I don't know how to play this game. I'm hoping there's a tutorial included. If there isn't, this is going to be a very short video uh, because there's no way I'm going to be able to learn how to play without it. So let's look in the options first. Always like to look in the options. Okay, so the options isn't working. Is anything working? Oh, here we go. Resolution. Oh, we can change that. Let's go big. There you go. Uh, we want V-Sync on. Turn the music down a little bit. Apply. Is it doing it? Okay, this all appears a bit slow. I don't know if it actually did that or not. Okay, yeah, it did that, right. So yeah, play online or play offline, I don't really know. Uh, Magnifico is pronounced man Magnifico, Magnifico, right, not Magnifico. <laughs> it's my English, Magnifico. Um, so we're gonna play offline. And we're going to do a tutorial. Yay! Oh, we got six tutorials. We may be here for a while. Grab your coffee, grab your uh, grab your cushion. Game basics, because I don't know anything about it. So I'm going to start start with the basics. Well met, friend. Lorenzo Il Man Magnifico. Lorenzo Il Magnifico, oh, I can't get that right, is a complex strategy game in which you will have to set up your economy at its best in order to dominate my city, Florence. Welcome, Excellency. Right, select a place in the city. Okay, next. Your goal is to get assets to produce and transform resources. I have played the uh, the marbles game, so the, the card game version of this, which is actually a board game. Your goal is to get assets to produce and transform resources and then convert those resources into victory points. Yep. The more efficient your economic engine is, excuse me, the easier it will be to overcome your opponents. Right. Perfect pronunciation. Josh is here as well. Hi, Josh. Magnifico. Right. I'll just keep saying it. <laughs> the game is set in three eras, each consisting of two rounds for a total of six game rounds. When the last round is over, the player with the most points wins. The main mechanic mechanism behind this game is the work is the worker placement. Worker placement. Uh, you and your opponent will place workers called family members in different action slots around the city preventing your rival, your rivals to do this. It needs a bit of editing this text um, from doing the same and thus getting bonuses of various kinds by assigning family members to those actions. And we have arrows pointing to these. OK, you will get resources or valuable assets that will improve your economy for the rest of the game. You can see all possible action slots high highlighted right now. So here, 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 here. OK, right. Uh, everything Lorenzo says should be read in an Italian accent. Oh, if only I could do that. <laughs> I'd just embarrass myself. These are your family members, okay? Uh, that is the workers you will assign around the city. They are represented by a dice value rolled randomly at the beginning of each round. Each opponent has just as many with the same values. Okay. The value of a family member determines their ability to be assigned or not to a particular action. If you notice, each action is also marked with a die value. Yes. That is the minimum value required to perform it. Okay, minimum values then. Uh, Lorenzo Il Magnifico is a turn-based game. Following the turn order indicated at the top, you and your opponents will perform one action at a time, sending one of your family members to an action slot to perform the corresponding action. 
Now it's your turn. Let's try with something easy. First, touch an action slot. Okay, so I'm going to touch the monastery. I don't know why I'm touching the monastery. I'm touching the monastery. This is a conquest action that allows you to gain a territory. Okay? Don't worry, you will learn everything about different assets and resources during the following tutorials. Uh, simply add an extra A to everything. Yes. <laughs> so this is a conquest action, gain a territory which is green. Okay. Here, are, here you can see all the details related to the action you are about to do. So you get a floor bonus of one. Okay, which is a lantern. Two military points, we can see here. One servant, which is there, yep. Uh, and during a harvest, okay. As you may notice, this action slot has a minimum value of five. Okay, yeah, you can see that there. So let's send your family member a value of six. I don't know why there's a six on the table there. But anyway, we're sending this one. Now confirm this action. Okay. Done. Right, so what's happened? Stuff has happened. Wonderful. You performed an action and obtained a territory. In the following tutorials, you will learn what distinguishes each action and what you can earn out of it. For now, be happy to know you acquired a valuable asset from which you can obtain resources in future turns as well as an immediate bonus to your current resources. Once the action is completed, you must pass the turn by pressing end turn. During your, your opponent's turn, you can see which action is performed and which family member was used to, to, to do it. So it looks like the things are taken from here. Action slots that were occupied, either by you or by your opponent, will be available again during the next round. Since you used your family member of value 6, you will have to choose another one for the next action until you have assigned them all. At that point, the round can end, you get back all your family members, their value is recalculated randomly, and some action slots will be updated and offer different assets. Okay, go to the next tutorial to discover the effects of different actions, assets and resources. Okay, off we go then. Tutorial 1 done. Tutorial 2. There are six types of fundamental resources in this game. Gold, stone, wood, servants, military points and faith points. Okay. You can view your own resources at the bottom of the screen. Right, so we've got four servants, uh, five gold, two stone, three wood, no faith. What was the other one? There was another one. Can't remember what the other one was. Um, I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Peter said, in the board game, you're collecting cards to your tableau. Right, okay. So these would be cards over here, and I would be taking them. Right, and those held by each of your opponent uh, by opening or hovering their profile. Ah, there we go. Servants, faith, military points. That's the thing I missed, which is the blue cubes down at the bottom. So red has two, green has five. Ah, you can see that on here. Right. Okay. Playing against Lady Diana. Additionally, there are four types of assets. Territories, characters, buildings and ventures. That's these four colours here. Acquiring an asset usually requires spending some basic resources, but allows us to get new ones, permanent bonuses or valuable victory points. Yep. All assets in your possession are shown at the bottom of the UI next to your resources. That's this. Uh, if you remember, we acquired a territory during the previous tutorial. Yeah, so that's that. Once again, your assets collected by your opponents can be seen through their profile. Okay, so Lady Diana has also collected a territory. If you wish, you can also select yours or press directly the type of asset you are interested in to view detail all rules related to every asset you own. Okay, I'm clicking on it and nothing's happening. Oh well. You can get new assets by visiting the towers. I think that's this. 16 action slots that allow you to obtain territories, characters, buildings and ventures. By assigning a family member to one of these action slots, you will get the corresponding assets provided you can pay for it. Just as you did with the territory in the previous tutorial. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what the cost to pay for something is. Is it on the right? I think it might be on the right in the lantern. I think that might be the cost. Let's see all the details about what make, makes each asset unique. Select this building. The mint. Okay, so the mint. Base price, three stone and one wood. So that's in the top left. Uh, you get five victory points, which is shown there. Yep. 
During production, whenever you satisfy the activation value of this card during a production, gain one gold for each one building you possess. Okay. This is the final price you need to pay for purchasing this asset. One wood and three stone, yeah. You can preview all resources you were about to spend. Oh, excuse me, I really got tired. Right, so it's telling me. I think that's in red, I don't know. Oh, it's in red because I don't have three stone. Uh, I'd better spend directly on your resources, a backy. What's in a backy? I have not heard that word before. It's like an ab abacus. All assets, except for territories, have a cost to pay during purchase. Every action slot in towers. Yeah, the, this text needs editing, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't take long. Uh, and I'm not offering to do it, but somebody should do it. Shows its cost through small flags on the ceiling. Yeah. Some assets may even have two payment options. Look for action slots where cost flags are on both sides of the entrance value. Right, okay. For those, you can pay either what's on the left or what's on the right. Okay, so that's either two gold stone and a wood or two military, I guess. Plural, plural of abacus. Thank you very much, people in the chat. Items on the left side of each slot represent the immediate effect associated with this asset, i.e. all the bonuses you will immediately get after purchasing it. In this case, you would be granted five victory points. Yep. And in contrast, on the right side cider of each slot, you can see the permanent effects. Uh, how they work strictly depends on the type of asset we are considering. For example, permanent effects of buildings may be triggered during the production action, which you will learn in the following tutorials. Yes. Uh, had a similar issue with Wingspan Digital last night. They need help with bird name pronunciations for common names. It's just, it doesn't take much to do it. I mean, there's blatant typos in there. It's just, yeah, it's annoying. Um, the permanent effects of territories improve the harvest action. Okay, yep. Ventures are worth points at the end of the game. Characters, on the other hand, have special effects that change how other actions work. Right, so each type does a different thing. Prices, immediate effects, and permanent effects can be seen for convenience directly inside of every tower action slot. However, you can select a specific asset if you want a more complete explanation, which shows over there. Got it. For example, I wonder what this character does. Try selecting it now. Here you can read the details of all permanent effects associated with the Warlord, which is that. You may want to scroll down a little. Okay, no. <laughs> I didn't need to scroll down at all because it was on there. Not bad, right? Whenever you take a territory from towers, decrease the value of the tower slots by two. But yeah, don't quite know what that means. Uh, Cider is also a tasty beverage. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's just side with an accent. <laughs> Center hours in the chat. Thank you for joining in. Uh, remember, you can switch from one action slot to another just by picking another one as you did now, or close the detail. Right, okay, so yeah, we can click around and see different ones if we want to. Or close the detailed view. I don't know how we close the detailed view. No. Okay. Maybe we should recruit this character as this turns action. After all, we have enough gold to pay his price. We do. Okay, let's do that then. Curses. We don't have a family member powerful enough, because it needs to be three, and we don't have a three. But don't worry, all is not lost. Servants are a special kind of resource. In addition to being spent on certain assets, they can be used to enhance the value of a family member for a single action. When the value of a family member is less than what is engraved over the action slot, you can spend servants to boost it up until it reaches the necessary value. So assign your family member of two to this action. Oh, as you can see, one servant has been, have been, yeah, it should be has been, automatically assigned to their die. That's that, I think, yep. It will confirm this action, they will, if you confirm this action, yes. Okay. Done, recruit. Okay, great. As already mentioned, you can review the asset you purchased through your profile. Where? Uh, furthermore, an icon is your personal, s an icon in your personal space reminds you you have taken your first character. Is that that? I don't know where this icon telling me that I've taken my first character is. Um, 
The transition to a realistic UI is very confusing. It was towers in the board game, but here it's columns of floors in a single building. Exactly, it's not towers. It's, as you say, it, it's one building, uh, which is a bit confusing. Not on Android yet, uh, only on iOS. Uh, and Wilmer loves, loves my accent. Thank you very much, I don't have an accent. Uh, Ori says, the numbers on dice and cost in the towers, which are important, are very small and hard to read. They are. I'm having to close in and have a look. Very different graphic design compared to the board game. Yeah, which is fine. I don't mind that as long as it's clear. Um, anyway, speaking of which, speaking of, you will notice there are only six slots for each asset. So the six here, oh, these are for, okay, so these are the slots for territories. These are the slots for buildings. I don't know where the slots for characters are. Oh, that's these. So the book there, that means I've got a character. Right. In fact, you cannot acquire more than six assets of the same type. However, acquiring territories or characters unlocks victory point goals you will get at the end of the game as represented by the icons. Okay, so the more you get, the more points you get. And I assume this is end game scoring. Although territories are free to purchase, they require you to possess a minimum military point threshold. Oh, no, no, sorry. The points are at the bottom. This is the military points you need. Right, okay. Yeah, got it. Uh, end your turn, I want to show you a little something, okay? When, you're, uh, when you or your opponents take an asset from a tower, the whole tower becomes occupied. This results in a small change in the rules we have seen so far. What does it mean by this? Okay. For example, select the mint again. Done. There is now an additional cost of three gold in addition to its basic price. This money needs to be paid regardless of who occupied the tower and or how many family members are already inside. Now, when it says tower, uh, as Ori is saying, these were four individual towers in the board game. So I don't know what that, right. Why is that three? I don't know why it's three. It could just be three because the tower is occupied. But is, is that this tower? I guess that's this tower. Select this territory. Okay. As you can see from the details, even if you are the one occupying this tower, you will still have to pay three gold if you want another territory this round. Okay, so I think it's vertical column. Yeah, column, says Linda. Thank you. But there's more. Try to select this family member. Since you already have sent a family member marked by a coloured die, black, white or orange, in this tower, Right. The only family member you can use is the so-called neutral family member, the one whose die is always set to zero. Okay, so you can't send two coloured family members in the same tower, to the same tower. Right, so we can only select this one. By selecting it, you will notice the action becomes valid uh, and you can finally conquer this territory. The only drawback is that you have to pay a servant to raise the neutral family member by one. Thank heavens we recruited the Warlord earlier, which reduces the entry value of territory slots. Does it? How do we see that? I don't know how we see that. Uh, okay, the entrance values of this tower are decreased by two. And what does it mean by entrance value? Is that this price? I guess it is. Go on, take this territory. Okay, I'll conquer the forest. Wonderful, we are ready to end this turn and see what your opponent will be up to. Okay. Uh, we did run out of gold, so it would be wise to avoid occupied towers for our last action. We could instead invest our last family member in some long-term assets, which is these, these ventures, I guess. We can pay this venture through the mil th through the with the military points. You I'll, I'll just translate it for you. Uh, you gained earlier thanks to your warlord. So it requires two military or three? Base price, three military, and what's the two blue cubes then? Here we go. Military points have a quirk. The asset or the action requires you to spend a certain amount, but then the actual expense will be smaller. Why? I don't know. And why is it a different icon? Anytime a second room is chosen in a column, it's three extra gold. Yep. Uh, Ori says, as soon as somebody purchases anything from column, the banner on the ground floor unfurls and shows the extra cost. Here. Right. That's nice. Yeah, that is nice. 
So military points, I'm not understanding this at all. Why have we got two totally different icons? The asset or the action requires you to possess a certain number of military points, but then the actual expense will be smaller. Okay. Sure. We are ready to send our last family member. Okay, so we'll send this one. Where are we gonna send it? We're sending it here, so it needs to be a one and the base price is three, but we only spend two. Sure. Yeah, I still don't know why that isn't the same icon. Extraordinary. Sponsoring this venture will be worth some victory points at the end of the game. Okay. Uh, you probably noticed this was the last family member we had. This means the end of the round is near. When a round ends, you get back your three coloured family members with new random values as well as the neutral one. But there's more. End your turn now and you will see. As you are seeing right now, all remaining assets are discarded and the towers are filled with new content. This means that you will have to choose properly which assets you want to purchase because you won't have any other chance to acquire them. Oh right, okay, so everything in the towers clears at the end of the round. Gotcha. Remember, your neutral family member starts with a value of zero. <coughs> Hang on. Got a bit of zero in my throat. Um, <coughs> starts with a value of zero, but can be used just as a regular family member, provided you have enough servants to increase its value. Right. I have nothing else to teach you about resources and assets, but in the next tutorial you will learn the whereabouts of other places in the city <coughs> and how to perform other powerful actions. <coughs> Yeah, don't eat a bowl of cereal very quickly before doing a live stream. Top tip. Right, tutorial three. It's time to learn two of the game's fundamental actions. Harvest, which is an axe, and production, which is the cogs. As I mentioned during previous tutorials, the permanent effects of territories and buildings are triggered when you send one of your family members to perform one of these two actions. This is the barn. It doesn't look like a barn. By sending a family member here, you will activate the harvest action, which triggers the permanent effect of the territories you have conquered. Yep, that makes sense. This, on the other hand, here is the workshop. Sending a family member here will activate a production, which instead triggers the permanent effect of your buildings. Normally, a family member of one is sufficient to perform these actions, but you will sometimes find it better to place somebody more powerful. For the sake of the example, I filled your possessions with some territories and buildings. I can see that. In a regular game, uh, you would have purchased and conquered those assets just as you learned in previous tutorials. But enough talk, let's see how harvest works. Select the barn. Ooh, nice. Crates representing the permanent effects of all territories you have conquered are displayed on the barge. Okay. What I'm a bit confused by is I seem to have three territories here, yet there are four things on the barge. So I don't know. Oh, as we, have we got a default one? I think we have a default one here. Yeah, you also have an additional crate that does not come from a territory, a personal bonus that you always have. Uh, you can even choose its content at the beginning of the game if you choose the choose basic income option. Right. Each crate has an activation value above it. It is the minimum value your family member must have in order to collect the proceeds. That's the dice number, I guess. Let's give it a try. So we're going to assign the four. So the four can go to either one of those three, because this one needs a five. Uh, John's here. John loves Lorenzo. I think I will as well. Uh, I think I'll probably prefer the physical board game. Uh, I normally do. Uh, there are certain exceptions where I prefer the digital game, like Through the Ages. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, prefer board games. So, as you can see, the value is sufficient to follow the activation of your personal bonus in the first two crates but not the last one, yep. If you were to confirm this action now, you would only get two wood, one gold, one stone, and two servants. Oh, I'd get all of it. Two wood, yep, yeah, just about see that. It is small, very small. One gold, two servants, right. But there's a trick to reaching the value necessary for the last crate. Yeah, use a servant. Yeah, servants are a special type of resource, enhance the value of actions, when you perform a harvest or production, you can assign as many servants as you wish to reach a higher activation value. Yes, so add one servant. There you go. So 
So it's now five, which means I get all of them, and I also get two military and two two extra servants. So yeah, of course. Nice. So you get all of them. Those resources you have obtained have, have been added to your... Yeah, now use them at will. Nice. Harvesting or making a, making a production is an action. As taking assets from towers, this means you will have to end your turn and let your opponents play. Right. The production action works exactly like harvesting, but it involves buildings rather than territories. There is just one small detail you'd better learn. It's your turn. So we're going to activate the workshop. We get a thing up. Uh, personal bonus, as well as to gather all resources from crates whose activation value is less than or equal to that of your family member. Yeah, so pretty much the same. But build it. some buildings convert resources into other resources or bonuses of various kinds. The arrow on the crate. Just about see it. Why this isn't a lot bigger, I don't know. This could be twice the size. It's way too small. Um... All buildings requiring one or more resources as input must be manually activated. Let's try assign this family member. So it's a one. <clears throat> Barracks convert one servant to three military. Yep. Yeah. Since you have a lot of servants and no military points, I suggest you activate it. Okay. Done. The cost of activating the barracks is shown here as a reminder. Where? There? Okay. If you change your mind, you can cancel the activation of a uh, with this button. Yeah, I don't want to. Produce. There we go. You've got an interesting amount of resources overall, isn't that right? Um, I wouldn't have called them interesting, but that is my turn over. Right, you may have noticed that after your previous actions, the entry value on both barn and production changed from one to four. It did. I did notice that, honestly. This happened because after first, after the first usage in every round, the minimum activation value for harvesting or making productions is increased, thus making further actions more difficult. Let's see what this means in detail. After someone has performed a harvest stroke production action, all actions of the same kind have an activation value increased by three on every crate. Yes. You too can do these actions once more, as long as... One of the two family members you use is your neutral one. Oh, right, yeah, because you can only use one coloured die thing. So do we want to do the neutral one? Don't think we do. That would cost loads of servants. Finally, remember this. Contrary to what I said so far, in two-player games, both barn and workshop can be used just once every round. Oh, right, okay. So two-player games, it's once per round. Got it. This concludes what you need to know about harvest and productions. Are you ready for the next tutorial? Yeah, sure. Let's check the chat. Is the orange die Tom Vassal? It could be. It did look a bit like it. Uh, board games are meant to be played physically. That is true, John. But, you know, there are certain reasons for playing board games digitally. <laughs> Especially right now. Um, to the John's here. Yeah, that's hard for most of us right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your gaming group is your family, wife, dad, brother, step, mum, so nothing has changed. Well, that's great. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm playing games with Vicky now and again, and we're having people around on Fridays, but only one or two at a time. Right, anyway, next tutorial. We talked about how to take assets from towers, and how to make harvests and productions. The last actions left are visiting either the Market Square or the Council. Why I've decided to learn another game tonight, I don't know, because my brain is overflowing with other games that I'm working on. But I wanted to. I've always wanted to learn this game, so why not? So... Market Square or Council Palace. You will soon notice after some purchases, your treasury will start to be a little empty. Fortunately, to cope with the scarcity of resources, those actions will always be at your disposal. Right. This is the marketplace. You can send one of your family members here to get all the resources gathered under a single arc for free. Arc? Arch? Probably should be arch. To visit it, start by selecting the shop where you want to collect resources, in this case, a taxer. Choose which family member to send. The value of one is sufficient. Okay. And then collect. Right. So you just go there, get stuff, run away. Now that you have occupied the taxer, no other player will be able to do the same thing during this round, but other stores are still available for both you and your opponents. 
Just remember, the armorer and the advisor will be available to visit only in four-player games. Okay. Going to the market is an action too, so there's nothing left for... Nothing... Nothing... nothing another typo. I will let them know when I feed back to them. I'll say, thank you very much for the key. I've played it. I've done a video. Here it is. Please get somebody to at least proofread your text. Um, like many other worker placement games, the turn order is important to have more choice about how many actions are available. In this case, fate has decreed you are the last player and, as such, your opponents have had more choice during this round. To change the situation for the better, you can visit the Council Palace. Okay, so that affects turn order. Uh, obtain, free of charge, one gold and one council privilege, uh, which is a bundle of resources chosen uh, among those proposed. I notice you are quite lacking in wooden stone. Cheeky git. Yes, I am. Uh, so you could pick those as a reward. Okay. Then send this family member and confirm this action. Okay. Uh, nice. Not only did you get the resources you chose, but your family member booked a change in turn order for the next round. Standard Euro game stuff. Player order in the next round is modified according to the order in which family members of each player were sent to the council palace. You can keep track of who visits the palace here. Okay. Please note, finally, that council privileges are quite a common reward. You will find that many assets, you will find that, that, that many assets allow you to pick a council privilege during the game. While the choice among resources is always the same, getting a council privilege without visiting the council palace does not change the turn order. Yeah. Next tutorial, we'll deal with scoring and supporting our Holy Vatican. Cool. Yes. Arch, they probably mixed it up with the Italian word. Okay, there you go. Pierre is here, saying the UI is still ugly. <laughs> um, it's not great, is it? It's all right, but it's not, it's not great. Let's take a moment to remember. The game ends after six rounds, yes. As you've already seen, at the end of each round, every family member leaves the city. Their values are recalculated and all remaining assets on the tower are replaced. Yep. Rounds are collected in three eras, consisting of two rounds each. You can see the progress of game rounds on the main dome of the cathedral, which I can't because the scroll's over it. When an era ends, it is time to address requests coming from the Vatican. In other words, you will have to show your support to the Vatican at the end of, round, at the end of the second, fourth and sixth round. During this phase, players will be able to show their support for the Holy See is that right? Holy See? Wow. Through their faith points. Red. Cross. You may have noticed that some effects and rewards yield you faith points. The amount of faith points you own is shown on both the abacus below and on the side of the cathedral. In really tiny icons. Okay. Supporting the Vatican means spending the faith points you possess. You will have the chance to do that at the end of all scheduled rounds. Each era has a minimum number of faith points required to support to show support to the Vatican. You will need three faith points at the end of the second round, four at the end of the fourth, five at the end of the game. I guess that's... Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, these values are shown as a reminder on the side of the church dome just below the corresponding era. Okay. I mean, I can see the points... Yeah, I'm not really seeing that. Let me show you how it works. As you can see, we are at the end of round two. So it's time to end your turn. Yeah, I'm not really seeing... I mean, I see three, four and five, but I see points, not, not faith. In this case, I have provided you with enough faith points to guarantee the salvation of your soul. Oh, thank you. Uh, you can hence select yes to support the Vatican. No, don't. Um, as a consequence, you will spend all your faith, but will also gain an amount of victory points equal to what is specified on the side of the cathedral, which is three. Oh no, it's X minus one. No, what's this? The shade of eternal... If you accept, you will be rewarded some victory points. Five faith is five victory points. Otherwise, you can keep all your faith, but we will be excommunicated with the following effect. You can, you can keep all your faith, but we will be excommunicated. If you accept, we'll be rewarded. 
Okay, so, yeah, okay, right. He's talking to... Yeah, I'm a bit confused there. Whenever you gain gold... Oh, so if you don't spend the thing, you're excommunicated. And then whenever you gain gold, you get one less. If you're gaining gold from multiple sources, you get one less for each. Right, okay, I think that's right. Holy See is correct. It's position like the POTUS in the USA. Thank you very much, Sergio. Not heard that phrase before, the Holy See. <clears throat> so it's saying we can select yes, or we could select no. And we lose all of our faith if we do, and we get three points. Sure. Nice. Oh, I don't get a choice. Let's say yes. Okay. When all players have finished their turn, you can see who was able to support the Vatican and who was not. Uh, the latter, such as the green player in this match, are punished with an excommunication. They keep their faith points, but now suffer a permanent malice. Malice is a weird word. It's the opposite of bonus. I know that because I've come across it loads of times in board games, but it's just, you don't see it in English. But it is the right word, I believe. Excommunications are permanent malices. It should be penalties, really. Um, that accompanies the recipient throughout the game. All right. Wow. Green player will get one less gold, one gold less from every source. Close the summary screen now. Okay. At any time during your turn, you can visit the church to see the effects of the excommunications. Be aware, there are many types of excommunication, so you will find new effects during your next matches. Okay, so it's not the same every time. In some situations, you may decide to voluntarily not support the Holy See. Regardless of whether you have the required faith points or not, you can opt not to show your support. You will get an excommunication, but you won't lose the faith points accumulated so far, thus be able to aspire more at the end of the next era. Speaking of which, I think it's time to talk about the scoring system at the end of the game. With the sixth round, when the sixth round ends, in addition to all victory points you've already collected, you will get the following. One point for every conquered territory. Yep. Two points for every recruited character. That says three. Oh, sorry, two. Victory points for every recruited character. Okay. Three, the sum of victory points specified by every venture you sponsored. Four, an additional victory point for every five basic resources you did not use. Okay. And then five victory points if you are the player with the most military points, or two if you are you are the runner-up. Okay. Victory points owned owed for the remaining amount of faith points if you did not support the Vatican at the end. Okay. And the player with the most victory points will be declared the winner. Hooray! Advance to the new tutorial, leaders and leader activation. Right, we're almost there, I think. Uh, bonus and malice, the latter all quite obscure word. Yeah, Paul Inkow's here. Hi, Paul, thank you for joining in. This is me learning how to play Lorenzo Il Magnifico with the app. So it's literally me just reading, if you don't mind that. Um, one of the additional rules in Lorenzo Il Magnifico, sorry, Magnifico, uh, allows you to add leaders to matches. Additional rules? Optional? Or is it included? I don't know. Leaders add more variability to the game. I think that's optional. Sounds like it's optional. Uh, offer secondary goals, which if reached, can give you quite the edge during the match. If you have selected use leaders option during game creation... Right, I'm, I'm going to skip this tutorial for now. I think I'll come back to leaders later, because my first game is, is not going to be with leaders. So I'm just going to skip through this bit, and I might actually play a first game now. Botticelli. I'm, I'm just going to click where it's going to tell me to click and I'm going to click this and I'm going to click this. And, uh, if you play the board game, do you play with leaders? Is it one of those things that you should always play with leaders? Right. Yeah, optional expansion included in the game. Right, so we're going to go, we're going to start playing a game and um, yeah, what time is it? 10 to 11. I might not play the full game, but we'll see how we get on. I mean, I might just play quick. And hopefully it won't take long. So we're going to play offline. New game. Paul Grogan, that's me. Against Sir Cosimo on easy. Yeah, and we can add other people in if we want to. But no, nope, I'm just going to play. But I don't play red. I want to change my colour. Why can't I change my colour? That's a bit rubbish. That is a bit rubbish. I don't want to play red. Uh, right, choose basic income. No, let's just play. Right, off we go then.
Right. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> what should I do? <clears throat> well, we don't... <clears throat> process of elimination. We don't want to go here. We don't want to go to the barn because we don't have any territories. We don't want to go here because we haven't got any buildings. We probably want to buy something here before somebody else does. Um, and we've got some big numbers here. Oh, maybe in options for the main menus. Yeah, oh well. Thank you. I'll check that later. So I'm playing red. Um... So yeah, what, what should we go for? We've got a four, a six, a three, and a zero. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, look at all of this fancy stuff. Is that a seven? It needs a seven. Wow. Floor bonus, two lanterns. I don't know what... I don't know what floor bonus means. Is that two stone? And that's that's white. I don't know what white is. I know what blue is. Blue's military, isn't it? Yeah, blue's military. I don't know what white is. Is it white or is it? Oh, it's here. It's stone. So it looks white there, but it's grey there. Whereas that is wood. Okay, so lanterns are coming up, which looks like a floor bonus. So these are just better. Uh, Ross is here. Always play with leaders. Right. Well, I'm not doing for the first one. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think once you've played the game, then playing with leaders probably is the, the done thing. So yeah, the ones at the top are more expensive. Uh, they require a die of seven. But the bonuses are higher. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, okay, I could take this one. It would cost me a seven, which is a six plus a servant to take it. But then look, to activate it, you need a six. And I don't have a six. So I probably don't want to take that. What does this do? Permanent effect. Whenever you take a venture, decrease the value by two. Okay. Well, that's good for end of game scoring. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what these do. Start by grabbing some garden cards. They're free and we'll get you some resources. The, these territories. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not sure which one to take. Um, I might take this one. So this, this, um, yeah, I'm just going to pick a three to take this one. So this is during the harvest. Whenever you satisfy the activation value of the card, get a stone and, a, and two military. Yeah, okay, right. So we're conquering the citadel. Done. Right, my opponent is going to take that one. Right, my go again. So now we could go to this barn and we could harvest and we would get that. Or we could go for another territory, but then if we go for another territory and then we could use both territories. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this. I'm going to go to the gravel pit with this. Uh, I need to add on one servant. Has it already added on one servant? I think it has. And it's going to cost me three gold. So it's going to cost me three gold extra. Because I'm... Uh, because th there's already somebody in this column. Yeah, let's do this. And I'm hoping my opponent doesn't go to the barn. My opponent did not go to the barn. My opponent took that territory, which must have cost it three gold as well. So now I'm going to go to the barn. I'm going to go to the barn with the six. Because that way I get all of those juicy things there. So I get a wood, four stone, a servant and two military points. Seems good. Uh, John's saying you mainly try to get six green, six blue and as many purple as you can. Uh, Philip is asking what platform is this on? This is on Steam. Thank you for joining in, Philip. Hope you're well. Um, yeah, so this is available on Steam uh, right now. Yeah, came out not long ago, I think. So I've been there and I did that and I activated that and we're done. Okay, and then it's back to me. So I have a four left. Um... I don't have enough gold, so I can't go to either of these columns, so it's probably going to be these. Uh, and yeah, I mean, combo-tastic here. If you look at these, 
I've got loads of stone, so maybe I want to take this. I mean, I can't use it this turn, and buying it with a four seems a bit of a waste. It does, doesn't it? What does this do? Tax office. Whenever you satisfy the activate, yeah, gain one gold for each territory you... Ooh, let's go for that. So I'm going to use the four with a with a servant to purchase the tax office. Done. Boom. End turn. I haven't got any faith. <laughs> I'm going to get excommunicated, aren't I? Right, so we're off. Round two. Um, we could go for another territory. The dice have been rolled and it's all the threes. All the threes. How many servants have we got? Two servants. So I can see what these do now. Right, I'm getting, to, I'm getting the hang of the UI. When I activate this, I'm going to get loads of stone. This is that. We're all good. Don't forget the towers are about to get wiped. Yep, yep, that's fine. Um... Ross says, is it just me that prefers when digital component, digital board games still make the components look like cards? Yeah, no, I think I like that as well. I mean, yeah, they, these don't look like cards, but no, I don't, I don't mind actually. It's fine. What I like is when they don't, they don't get bound. Sometimes when you convert a board game into a, into a digital game, they, they stay within the bounds of the board game, and it would have been easier in some respects if they hadn't have done that, um, you know, and they'd have broken out and gone to a different place, uh, if you know what I'm trying to say. What are we doing? What are we doing with these three things? I've got an itchy nose. We need to get... How, how do we know how much faith is needed? It's supposed to be depicted on there, but it, I can't see it. I can't see is it depicted on there. I know it's three four and five, because it said that earlier. Hmm. And I don't really know what these things here are. Yeah, we'll find out. What are we going to do? We've got three threes. We've only got two servants, so I need to use them wisely. I've got loads of stone. I need to be building things that cost stone which is these buildings, but I can't go up there. I need a seven. Could take this residence. What does the residence do? Whenever you blah, blah, blah. Exchange one gold for one council privilege. Well, I don't have much gold. Should we go for the faith? I mean, that gets three faith. But I need a seven to get that. We can't get a seven. Hmm. I don't know what to do. I really don't. I think I might just take this. Take the forest. That's going to get me loads of wood. Yeah, let's take that and let's use this one. I don't think it matters which colour you use. It's just... It's just a coloured forest. Right, now, what is my opponent going to do? Took that building. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my... Four... Sorry, I'm going to go to the barn, I'm going to go with my three, and I am going to send two servants to get all of that stuff. I hope there isn't a limit on things. <clears throat> so that all goes in there, and that all goes in there. Ah, right, I've got 11 stone. There you go. Yeah, I'm just gathering resources. <laughs> the white spots along the tower is the faith track. Right, but how do you move up the faith track? Or is that just how much faith you've got? Oh, which is why you need three, four, and five. Ah, okay, now it makes sense. So as well as your cubes collecting down here, they also show up there. Right, that would make sense. We have a three left, what are we going to do with it? Are we going to bother to try and get any faith? I don't think we are, which means we're going to suffer this. Okay, we get less servants. Okay, so what we're going to do with the three? Where are we going to go? We don't want to use a building. We could take one of these characters, although they cost gold. We don't have gold. We could repair the church. Can we take that? We can't take that. Can we take that? We can take that. We can also take this, if we had a servant. 
Oh no, we need two sevenths. It's going to be this. Or it could be this. Market mental, get five servants. Oh no, green's already been there. Yeah, green's already been there. Uh, the cross is my position at the moment. Yeah, got it. Right, okay. Thank you very much, Darren and John and Juan. So, we're going to use the three. I don't think there's many places I could go. I could go for five gold, but I'm just going to take this. Yeah, we'll take that. Oh, we've got the zero as well. So I could take that with the zero, actually, with the one servant, and use the three for something else. Oh, tricky. I don't know. No, I'll go there with the three. So we're going to sponsor repairing the church. So I get one faith, and I'll get five points at the end of the game. Okay, and that goes down there as a book. Yeah, okay, done. So my opponent takes that one, and then it's back to me. All I've got left is a zero, and... Yeah, so you can see here, I've now got one faith. Yeah, which is not going to be enough for that. That's fine. We can't really get two more faith. So... I don't know. Should we just go and get five gold? Because we can't get that. I could activate the building. Activating the building would get me two gold and one military point. Is that any use? I think I'd take five gold instead. Yeah, we're going to take that. We're going to go to the market. We're going to go to the taxer and collect some taxes. And there we go. End turn. Yes, the shade of eternal damnation looms upon us. Yeah, so, sorry. There we go. We've been excommunicated. Uh, the Holy See spoketh. So we've both been excommunicated? I guess so. Clang. My turn. Right, so we've got some better dice this turn. And we have some of these. Now, we can only conquer territory number four if we have seven military, which we do not have seven military. We only have five military. So we need to get some more military if we want to conquer some more territories. How do we get more military? Boom, look at that. But that costs six gold. We have six gold. Well, what's this here? Base price six, brackets three. I. So you have to have six, but it only costs you three. Is that what that is? I guess so. Uh, that's five servants. Building the bastions, that would get me... Yeah, let's do that one. Let's just go for this one down here. So it only needs a one, so I'm going to use... Ah, I have no servants. So I can't actually use this zero at all until I get some servants. So we're going to have to go for this one to get myself some servants. Oh, I could go here. Can you use the zero to go there? No. Oh, it's got to be a one. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So this is the problem with having no servants. So I think we're going to go here. We're going to hosting foreigners. Because it's also four points at the end of the game. Okay, and I only get four servants because of the excommunication. Right. Gotcha. What's the next excommunication? You can't send family members to the market anymore. Sure. Okay. End turn. Back to me. Right, what we're going to do now. So we've got the servants, which means I can use the zero. Uh, it'll cost me three gold to go here again. I wanted the military, didn't I? I do like this top one. It does cost six gold, but look what bonuses you get. Yeah, let's go for the top one. So we're going to use a five. Oh no, because it's going to cost me six gold. Minus the two, but plus the three. So I don't have enough gold for that. Ah, <sighs> oh, right. Change of plan. No, I don't want to change of plan. I want military. 
I can get military here, that's too military. And nobody's taken that yet. Yeah, I think that's what we want, the Sculptor's Guild. So I've had to use a five plus two servants to take it. And it cost me four stone, which I've got four stone. Yeah, I like this abacus down here, it's good. So we're gonna purchase the Sculptor's Guild. There you go, that's my second building. Boom. Enter. So Cosimo is playing. Right, back to me. So I've now got the seven military, so I can now conquer a fourth territory and my opponent hasn't conquered any territories yet. So I think that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use the four to take... I think we take this one. Yeah, let's take that one. Okay, and that gets me four points at the end of the game. Or is it four points now? It's four points now. So where is my actual score? Up there. Right, okay, got it. End turn. Quick game. So we've got the zero and we now do have a servant. So I'm going to spend a servant and we're going to go here to get more servants. Yep. Done. Right. How do you see how much faith my opponent has? There. Six. I want to see it on here. Oh, I can. It's the tiny little banner there. Okay, so I can see my opponent has six faith. Right, okay, so we need the faith by the end of this turn or we get excommunicated. Um, and I need another three of it. There is three there. We don't have the gold. We have the stone. We do not have the wood. I kind of want to activate these buildings, don't I? And I need a six to get everything. Oh, sorry, I need a five to get everything. I can't take another territory. Oh, cats have just come in. Loki. Because uh, I need 12 military to take my fifth territory. Hmm. So I won't be doing that just yet. So I think I'm going to use the six in the barn. And that will get me all of this stuff. Yeah, there we go. Right, what am I going to do with all these resources? Come here, Loki. Stop trying to climb up the radiator. Come here. Come here. Come on. No, that's the cables. No, you don't want to... Oh. He's helpless. Um, yeah, so the noise that you can hear in the background, that is Loki scratching against the radiator to try and climb up it to get to the windowsill. Oh, is he... There he is. There he is. He's got it. Just... <laughs> Not very graceful. Um, so, my go, what were we doing? Um, I've done the production, I'm happy with that. Ah, uh, these buildings? Yeah, I'm mean, gonna need big numbers to run these buildings, so it's probably gonna be buying stuff or going here to get extra stuff from here. Uh, we haven't bought any characters yet. I mean, characters appear to give you discounts or give you extra bonuses or do particular things. Uh, this look quite good. Crusade, let's go on a crusade. Base price, eight military. But it only costs you four. So it costs you four military, but you have to have eight. Okay, but it does get all of this stuff. Uh, I kind of want that one. Can I have that one? Yeah, actually, I can take that one. Which is... What's this one? Support to the cardinal. Sure. Let's take that one. So, oh, that that gives the choice. You either spend four military or three gold, two wood, and two stone, which I've got, so I can do that. So we're going to send a two. Uh, yeah, plus plus one. Choose how to play this asset. Ah, right. Yeah, I choose. So I'm going to choose that side. There you go. Done. doing sneaky stuff back to me we've got the two left and the zero uh, right so what have we got available here 
That might be quite a good one. Cost three wood to build, I don't have three wood. What's that one? Convert servants into military. The barracks, yeah, okay. This one converts faith into golden points. So that needs a five. What can I buy with a two? Uh, not very much, actually. I could go for this one. Where else can I go with a two? I mean, I've got two actions left. Don't really know where I want to go. Because I need a five to activate these. Maybe I should go for an architect. You can take a building from the towers as though you were using a family member of value six. You can still use servants to increase this value. You also get a discount of one wood and one stone on its cost. What, every round? Or just a one-off? Why is that a base price of four? Oh, because that's what it costs. And what's this one? Increase the value of all of your harvest by three. Oh, wow. So that means I can send a low value there and it still works. Yeah, that's pretty good. What about this one? Royal Messenger. Uh, gain three different council privileges. Where are the council privileges? That's these. Okay. I don't know. I'm a bit I'm a bit stuck now. Dice with low numbers. I don't really know what I can do with them. Jonathan's here. Hi Jonathan, thank you for joining in. I am about halfway through Lorenzo Il Magnifico. And I don't know what to do. I'm a bit stuck. Any advice in the chat? What should I go for? Do I just take gold? Take servants? I might be just tempted just to take the gold. Yeah, just gonna take the gold. Okay, back to me, my last action. So I think we're going to go here with this and this. There we go, and turn. Right, so I am now going to support the Vatican. Spend all of my faith. I didn't get excommunicated. I got four points. Okay, so I'm on 15, my opponent's on 22. I have some points coming in at the end of the game, I believe. Right, we're on the third era. Off we go. Look at these dice. Look how rubbish they are. Wow. Uh, a paramour. You get two points for each character you possess. I don't possess any characters, so that's a bit rubbish. Okay, these have all got 12. Oh yeah, the 12's on there because I now need 12. Right, okay, that's good. Uh, low dice could be used to get servants and gold. Yeah, which is there, but I kind of don't... Oh, he's, he's stolen first place. Um, and I try. I kind of need to get five faith, don't I? So how am I going to get 12 military? I mean, I'm on nine. I'm looking for more military cubes. I can't take any of these. Um, yeah, I mean, there's this one. But... No, I can't see how I get the military, apart from the council phase. Council palace, there's two there. That seems a bit of a waste. How do I get the military? So let's spend a... Have I got four gold and three wood? No, I don't. I just don't have the... I don't have the right stuff. You need lots of these servants, don't you? Your harvest gives you two military. Does it? Yes, it does. It also gives me all of the extra stuff that I don't actually... But I'll tell you what, the harvest does, but I have to boost it up quite a bit. And it's only going to give me two military, and I need three. So we might have to do a council thing. Oh, no, I could do this. Ambassador. You can take an asset from any tower as if you were using a family member of seven. Okay, it's also pretty good. This is nice. Two points for every venture I possess. But again, it's quite expensive. Hmm. And what's this one? Right. Okay, so I think 
what I'm going to do is I am going to harvest. And I'm going to harvest with the three. Boost it up with two servants to make it a five, which means I harvest the whole lot. Okay, done. My opponent takes that. So, I'm now on 11 military. If I can get to 12, although it's now going to cost three gold to take one from here, but that's fine. Um, yeah, there's no real extra military available here, is there? Third blue room. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I've got the gold. It would be worth six points to me, but I need a five. That's using a lot of the servants, but that's what they're there for. Uh, I think I'm going to use the zero. No, I'll just use the one. Yeah, I'm going to go to the council with a one. Um, so I get a gold, and I'm going to take two military. Right, so my military is now 13. Okay. Let's end turn. Right, two dice left. So we can now take another territory. Um, so, I, yeah, let's do it. Let, let's take this one. So I need to use that plus a servant to take that one, which is going to get me 10 points. Boom in the lead. Did it add my 10 points? didn't seem to add my 10 points. Is that points at the end of the game or points at the points immediately? Because I don't think it added my 10 points. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, right, my last dice. Where are we going to go? We've got a zero. Well, I would like to take that, but it's going to cost me five servants. Is it worth it for six points? Or do we want to take this one? which is actually 10 points, but he's going to cost me... Oh, it does look like Tom Vassal. Definitely looks like Tom Vassal. Um, this one's going to cost me seven servants, and I haven't got seven servants. Ah, dang it. That one would have been nice. I've built these buildings, and I've not done anything with them. This is a bit rubbish. So I've got 15 military, so I could take this. Oh, yeah, we could. Let's take this. I'll take that with a zero, plus one for a servant. I need 15 military, but it costs me eight military. We are going to sponsor a sacred war. My military drops right down, but that's a fourth venture. And that got me not quite enough faith. But now it's the last round. Right, last round of the game. So, need to get some faith. What's this last one? Uh, at the end of the game, before final scoring, get one point for every five you have. Ooh, nasty. Um, okay, so we've got low values again. Yeah, maybe some faith points. Uh, end game is you only get the rightmost spot. Oh, so I get, I get 20, or do I get 10? Right. Yeah, yeah. Just, just on the last round. Yeah. So this interface. If I, if I do get ten points because that's covered over, that's not very clear. Oh, it's here. Right. It's telling me here at the end of the game. I'm going to get ten points for that. I'm going to get no points for that. Twenty-one. Uh, there's nothing here. So, okay. Yeah. No, that's good. What's in the chest is the points you're going to get at the end of the game. We got there in the end. Right. It's the last round. What am I going to do? Um. Oh, and there's points for this at the end of the game, isn't there? Yes. yes. Do we get some more faith? Let's try and get some more faith. Can we afford this? Yes, we can afford this. And we could actually just afford that with military. Oh, and it's 10 points as well. Let's do that. Let's send the one to here. Right, now, do we want to... Okay, I think I accidentally paid for it with the wrong, <laughs> the wrong thing then. Uh, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Okay. 
So that was nice. I've got 31 points coming in from Ventures at the end of the game. Uh, and what did that get me? That got me the faith. So yes, yeah, so I don't know at the end of the game, we spend the five faith and then and we lose all of it. Or we don't spend it and we get seven points. I, I need to work out how the end game scoring works. Because um, it seems like if you've got a lot of faith, you don't spend it at the end and then you get the points for this instead. But if you spend the faith, you lose all your faith. That's what it seems. A bit confused. A bit confused. Right, do we want to harvest? We probably do want to harvest, although we've got all these resources. Oh, and you get points for resources. Yes. So we probably want to harvest. Because it's stuff. It's free stuff. Um, so we probably want to harvest with a five. Oh, but somebody's already been there. Yeah, somebody's already been. So if we go with a two... Has anybody already been there? What's that then? This action is unavailable. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a two-player game. I can't use it. I want to use this, because that... Oh, no, that just gets me gold. Oh, and this converts stone into points. But it needs a five. Snagger, fragger, snagger, Right, so that's three gold, one stone and three wood. We've got that. Let's build this. Let's build a palace. Uh, we can build it with a two. Yeah, we can totally build it. There you go. Build that. Boom. Done that. Nine points. End turn. Took five servants. Right, so... I mean, I don't really... Yeah, I could. Yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to use the workshop. I'm going to use a three. But I am going to add three workers to it. I'm then going to spend... That and I'm going to do that. There you go. So I've activated all of these. I get loads of stuff and produce. There you go. That seemed quite good. I have one dice left and then the game is over. It's really hard getting these ones up here. So, dice, uh, where, where can we go? Where can we go that's going to get us some points? Uh, I mean, that gives me six points. Cost me six gold. I do have six gold. Seems quite good. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just take this. Use the zero. Recruit the governor. And that gets me six points. Okay. And we're done. So... Here's the thing, if I support the Vatican, I'm going to get... Yeah, this is the bit I didn't understand. So if I spend all of my faith, I get seven victory points. Or you can keep all of your faith, but you get excommunicated. What's the point of keeping your faith on the last round of the game? I guess I guess there isn't. So I'm, I'm going to support the Vatican because I don't want to lose this. And I do want that. But that, that is my question, is what happens if you don't support the Vatican in the last round? Or should you always support the Vatican in the last round? Because, yeah. So we've done that, spent all of our faith. And I won. Did I win? Oh, we're just adding up. Yeah, they absolutely stomped it. I mean, I am playing on the easy AI. And the winner is... Go on. Me. Say it. There you go. Whee! Little celebration. Charts. There you go. Okay. We're all done. So that's quite good. I mean, I enjoyed the game. Um, and I now know how to play Lorenzo Il Magnifico, which is a game that I've been putting off learning for, for quite a while. Uh, have a peek at the actual game when you can see if it's clearer. Yeah, I think I got it in the end. It was just some of the iconography was quite tiny. Um, it's a shame that there's typos in the tutorial, but it is just in the tutorial. Um, it wouldn't have taken them much effort to, to fix that, so it's a shame they didn't. I only played a two-player game. I only played it on the easy AI, and I haven't played with leaders. But there you go. That, that is it. That is uh, Lorenzo Il Magnifico. 
available on Steam right now. Thank you very much to Cranio Creations for the key. Uh, but thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters that help fund the channel uh, and allow me to basically take time out to make videos like this. Um, it's quite late now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna disappear, get up to bed, get up tomorrow morning, do some more rule book work. Thank you very much to everybody for joining. Um, yeah, take care and I'll see you all next time. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit Game Toppers LLC.